Okay. So before I start, uh, maybe let's go through about what is the individual project because some might not have read this document. So uh, in this semester, to replace the midterm examination, uh, we replace it as an individual project, which require us to write an engineering report to describe to describe an application of linear algebra in solving problems involving a network model. And so it is a report describing how you use linear algebra to solve problems in the aspect of a network model. So in today's tutorial, uh, the agenda will be, I will first talk about introducing what is a network to all of you because uh, I think some of you might not know what is a network and we hope that by sharing some concepts of network could help you to brainstorm more ideas of uh, what is this application and how is it related to the linear algebra and second of all, we will talk about some writing tips, which I think more people will feel more interested because this is not a writing course. And obviously we did not expect you to write something like English literature expectation on the report, but we hope that everyone could learn something during writing. Uh, at least write your report with a appropriate structure so that not only us, but all of you can understand what you're writing about. And last but not least, we'll talk about um, some very guys submission, which I guess some of you might have done that in the last semester, but I will still very briefly to talk about it. So, okay, so this report requirement I just mentioned, and I will talk more about it later. So let's talk about network. So what is the network? Network is about a collection of interconnected objects. So what is objects? For example, I just randomly draw four objects here. A, B, C, D. So there is four objects here. You may ask, what is object? Object is basically could be anything you can think of. It could be people. It could be an academic paper that I have been writing or it could be social media accounts, it could be vehicles, it could be anything. But just consider the object itself is not a, it's not a network. Why? Because now they are all independent, they are disconnected. So in order to form a network, they have to establish some sort of connections. For example, if the object is people, A, B, C, D is four people, you can think of connections such as Maybe A and B are couples, maybe A and B know our best friend, maybe A and C are our relatives, maybe C and B are friends, maybe D and C are friends, but D does not know B. So there are some sort of relationships that connect with each other. Then these objects together with these connections form a network. And these connections might, might or might not be mutual. So in terms of human relationship, it is a mutual relationship. So if A and B are relatives, if A are B's relatives, then B must be A's relative. These connections are mutual. But consider other cases, for example, citation, uh, which I've put it here, there's a factor of what we call impact factor. Uh, actually, what does it mean? So for example, now there's four objects, A, B, C, D. Now, this whole object is academic paper. So all of you might, might, have, might have known or, or know that by writing a paper, you need to have a reference or bibliography list to list out all papers that uh, you have been referring to by constructing your own paper. So if paper A has referred to B, we could say there's a connection between here. So this arrows means A has been referring to B. So A has sites B. So A might also have sites C. And at the same time, C might also have sites B. D has sites B, or maybe C has also sites D. So in this case, D 
these connections is not mutual, it is uh, directional. So A has said A has referred to B, but B might not have referred to A. So uh, why do I mention this? Is because uh, the most convenient way to calculate the impact of a paper, which means uh, out of millions of academic paper, how do we determine which paper is more important than the others? Then we could calculate a factor called impact factor. And this impact factor actually is a value come from calculate from this model, this network model. And by intuition, you will note that the more the more arrows that paper is being pointed to, for example, now the paper B, A refer to B, C refer to B, D refer to B. And by intuition, you will notice that B is the most important paper in this network. And there are many, many more. Let's give you a much more uh, concrete examples or more specific examples to let you have a more experience in, have a, have a feeling on what is the network model. So I will going to talk about a Facebook bubble. Facebook bubble, I will mention what is the meaning of Facebook bubble later on, but I would like to raise a normal phenomenon, which is the day of Facebook actually generate many tons of millions or trillions of data. And among this is 350 million of photos being generated per day, per day. And if you disregard this number, you, you just look at your own social media accounts, like Instagram, like Facebook. So if some of you, for example, can have more than 100 connections, maybe 100 Facebook friends or Instagram friends, for example, if all of them simultaneously send the same information, post, share the same post on the Facebook, do you think, do you think that Facebook will show all of them at the same time on the time feed? No, right? Because the Facebook time feed do, does not have enough space. So Facebook must choose, must choose, uh, you receive the post from who? So which information will you receive from your friends? Out of hundreds of your friends, even though the information is the same. So how Facebook do that is actually a result of network model. So for example, now there's four objects, right? A, B, C, D. Now these objects are social media accounts. Suppose there's four person. These four person uh, who just newly established or set up a Facebook account, they, because they are new to Facebook. So now, and A, B, C, D know each other, so they just add each other. So from Facebook point of view, because now this network only consists of four accounts with no historical records. So consider the person A here, the connections between A and C, A to C, A to D, A to B is the same because they are, uh, no historical record, they are just newly established. So Facebook assume the connection value are the same. So A could A will value the relationship between A and C by 0 0.33, A to D 0 0.33, A to B 0 0.33, right? So as time goes by, there is a fact that A and B are close friends in real life, in real life. Uh, close friends, or maybe, or maybe, maybe even more extreme, or maybe A has a crush on B. So A likes B very much. So what will happen is that in a Facebook activity, maybe Facebook could keep track of A's activity, right? Facebook knows that A always instantly reply B message or A likes whatever B likes, or A always, A appears in some photos of B and they tag each other. So these, sign of, these kind of signs tell Facebook that 
A values the relationship with B towards B much more than its relationship towards C and D. So in this case, Facebook could update the network, network parameter weights, which is this 0 0.6. This 0 0.6 actually means the how much does A value its relationship towards B. So because Facebook keep track of A's activity, it, it determines that uh, from its action, A likes what B likes and A always instant reply B. So as a result, the value of the connections between A to B is increased. And relatively speaking, the connections between A to C and A to D has been decreased and they sum up to one. So because this three value is just relative to each other. And at the same time, at the same time, or not at the same time, conversely, conversely. So Facebook can also has the ability to check whether a person dislike another person by looking at whether how much time, how much time that uh, person A, for example, uh, look, look, look into posts that C has posted, or by looking at whether A posts any hate reply on C. Uh, Facebook definitely has the ability to do so because nowadays there's many techniques like test mining or something that could detect emotion or something. So suppose that Facebook knows that A does not like C at all, shows no concern, and they have dissimilar interests, etc., etc. Then the value of relation between A to C has will be decreased. So relatively speaking, the relationship between A to D now become higher than A to C. So now this is from A's perspective. So from A's perspective, the relationship towards B is the highest, right? 0 0.6. The relationship towards D is 0 0.3. The relationship towards C is 0 0.1, right? So suppose now, suppose now, all three of them send the same piece of information I. So C send, make a post, we call it IC. And D make a post, we call it ID. B make a post, we call it IB. And A is the receiver. So suppose that IB, IC, ID are the same information. They, their information value is the same. Maybe it's the same piece of news. Okay. So, and suppose it's a very, very primitive Facebook. It, its capacity is only one post per day. So A could only receive one post per day. Then, because right here, right here, A values the relationship with B the highest. They have the highest weight. So, it definitely could see the post made by B because A likes B very much. So, A likes B very much, which results in a really high connection parameter weight 0.6. So, a could definitely receive the post made by B. But is it the end? No, no. And it is a very interesting thing about network, right? Suppose now it's reverse, reverse. Now, if A send an information, IA, to B, and C send an information, IC, to B, D send an information, IB, to B, so just by looking at the fact that A has a relationship, A has uh, really, really has a high relationship parameter towards B, it does not mean, it does not mean that B cares about A a lot. Maybe, maybe A likes B, but B doesn't like A. Maybe B has a crush on D. So from B's perspective, maybe the network weights become 0 0.9, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Then in this case, even though 
A could receive the information from B, but B might not receive the information from A because B values its relationship towards B much more than its relationship towards A. Or maybe, uh, like in other case, maybe B also has, maybe, maybe there's some other connections. There's many, many much more people which connect to B so that uh, maybe A is just one of his, his friends, his fans. So maybe B has much more relationship outside that she thinks or he or she thinks is more valuable to talk to. Mm -hmm. And in this case, B will seldom receive the post from A. So that's why even though A always in instant reply message from B, always see the message from B, it does not mean that B always see the message from A or even blue tech or gray tech or et cetera, et cetera. So what do I want to imply here? This is actually a result of Facebook bubble. Facebook bubbles means that, uh, if you see that I put a caption here, people only see what they want to see. It means that if you establish your social media account, you will not see everything. You will not see the whole truth of what you see. Instead, what you are seeing is what Facebook specifically designed for you. And those content usually come from the friends that shares a similar interest to you or the news or the posts that you and your friends like together. So this is the phenomenon of Facebook bubble. So people will only see things of what they want to see. So it will, my attributes to confirmation bias or something like that. If you are more interested, you can Google Facebook bubble and you can see how Facebook do it. But it is definitely an application of a network model using linear and view. So these slides I will skip because um, I will want to spend more time in talking about another examples of the, which shows a note uh, here. Another examples, which I think is um, more concrete. Why would I say more concrete? Because previous example I did not, uh, did not say anything about calculations. Uh, but yes, don't worry, I will upload it on the blackboard. So don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so I will have a more concrete example here, which is also in the documents on the blackboard. It's here. In here, it is also four objects. A, B, C, D. Now, what is the object? The object right now is the road junctions. So each object is a road junctions. And in these road junctions, you could be able to observe that the connections is not mutual. So A could go to B, A could go to D, but not in reverse. So C could go to B, C could go to D, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a network with not neutral connections. And in this network problems, uh, we will want to solve for X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Right. Um, actually, I'm not going to tell you. So I think everyone knows with the assumptions that there is no accumulation of vehicles in each junction. It's easy to set up a six count linear equation to solve it. And the details are in the photo. I'm not going to cover it because I think everyone knows how to solve these equations. But I want to raise out a really, really important point which is relevant to writing a report. Uh, after you make all those calculations, you definitely get a solution. For example, the solution here is like x1 is equal to blah, 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 x5, x2 is blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So, and x5 is free. And when you're writing your report, this is not the end of the report. You do not just write out the solution and that's it you need to ask further, so what? So what? This is the most important part of writing the report. So now, 
So no, no, this you are given this answer. So x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 is the flow of cars of this network model, right? And you need to ask about so what? And because um, actually it's not uh, for to give you some insights, maybe let me open up a blackboard. Uh, whiteboard. So there is, you know, there is a network. I actually for don't have. It, 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 it is not the actual network, but I, I just randomly join. I, I forget the. Or maybe some. Uh, this is X five, right? Or maybe some X three here. Okay, so one is to use linear algebra method to determine. Oh, x1, x2, x3, x4 is a function of x5, right? They all determined by x5. And x5 is free, right? So you can choose x5, whatever you want. Then, so what, so what? So you need to relate your results to so on so how does it solve a real life problem? What could be a real life problem here? Oh, because it's a traffic model. So maybe maybe a traffic model means that uh, it is a uh, you want to avoid congestions. Maybe each vehicles uh, passing through each road might incur some cost. But in case, some course. So maybe passing through A to B incur cost of C1, passing through B to D incurs cost of C2, C3, C4, C5, etc. etc. So maybe passing these five rows has five cores. And from a manager perspective, or maybe you are a civil engineer, you want to minimize the overall cost. So maybe some rows are some rows are a bit wider, some rows are narrower, and passing through a wider row might incur less cost uh, because you allow more car, uh, you allow more cars to pass through without less waiting time, less congested, right? So maybe from a civil engineering perspective, it's interesting to, for you to know that how to choose because x5 now is free right how to choose x5 such that the overall traffic cost is minimal is minimized overall traffic cost which is um, maybe c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus c3 x3 plus c4 x4 is uh, minimized Then, this linear algebra model is very useful, right? Because it is this linear algebra model tells you that you could choose x5. You could choose x5 such that, uh, and once you choose your x5, you could calculate x1, x2, x3, x4. And you could find out an optimal x5 such that the cost is minimal. And this is the significance of solving this network model. So if you, Report is right in this way, it will be more and more and more convincing. Although you don't have to you don't have to mention how do you minimize this optimization problem because it's not it's out of scope. It is a linear programming problem, but you need to remind or tell the reader why do you have to solve this system of linear equation? What is its potential application? How does it solve real life problem? Okay, so let's move to the writing tips. Okay, this is this rubric is the direct copy from the PDF. And what I want to mention is, of course, I cannot tell you about the content or relevance. Content is up to you to decide. And relevancy, so as long as your report is about linear algebra and its application, I guess it's relevant. But the, 
delivery itself is what I'm going to talk. And don't let the numbers fool you. Although it says 20%, although it says 20%, it is actually, this 20% is actually the prerequisite of the remaining 80%. Why do I say so? Imagine if you look at the report and you have no idea what it's writing about because of poor structure, because uh, it writes too many stuff, too many irrelevant stuff or very poorly organized content then you definitely will lose your interest to read. And if you lose your interest to read, who will cares about the content? No one. So if you cannot get this 20%, I'm sure you cannot get the full mass on the content and relevancy as well. So that's why now I'm going to talk about the delivery, how to make a well-structured report or proposal. Uh, so let's know about the right part. So it is a draft report that I temporarily made. Uh, you don't need to care about the content, but I want you to look at the left part. You just look at the left part by maybe five seconds, 10 seconds. And I'm sure no one will know what it is about. Because when you see, oh, what page you What is page you No idea. Why is this one, two, three, four? No idea. Why is this matrix A? Why does why suddenly it appears in matrix A? No idea. So um oh I'm only sharing a live one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thanks for the remind, thanks for the reminder. Yes, here, here, here. So if you look at the left part, if you look at the left part. It is a really preliminary report I draft. And it talks about page rank, linear algebra, soft problem and search engines. But if you read this, and uh, if you submit this kind of work, it's actually a really poor delivery because people won't know what you're talking about. Like this, what is page rank? What is this one, two, three, four? No idea, right? Why suddenly it appears a matrix A equals to something? What does what does th these numbers mean to us? No idea. So even though all the contents are correct, even though the algorithm is really, really elegant or nicely presented, no one will understand what you are trying to do. Instead, of course, I'm not going to dig deep about the content. I just want to show you the importance of a structure. For example, if you look about the right side, at least you need to include a title because a title allows you to uh, tell us about the reader, what your report is all about. At least you can read is about linear algebra applications on search engine and it is talking about an algorithm of what we call a page rank. So at least you know page rank is an algorithm. And after you have a title, you have subtitle, right? So there's a clear subtitles that helps readers address what they're currently writing. So they have an introduction and I will go through more about what you should write about introduction later on. And you have a problem definition and formulation, which defines all the symbol. So what does those matrix means? And what does this one, two, three, four means? And also you have a methods that shows the details procedures, which I skip here. I just have a bracket here. So it is supposed to write the de derivation of the detailed procedures of how you arrive this matrix. But at least you have a subtitle address the readers that now you are reading this. And actually I missed one important section here is what I've mentioned is implications. So this session actually means what does those numbers mean? Uh, what does those numbers mean? It means that uh, you cannot just solve the system of linear equations. You cannot just tell me 
the optimal matrix is blah, 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 or the optimal solution is blah, 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 blah. You really have to know what does those solution means? What does that matrix means? How does it relate to your real life application? This is the, I would say, I would need to put more emphasis on this. This is the most important part of the report. For everyone who is reading the report, actually for me as well, when I'm reading academic paper, I, I will not be interested in reading the, all the derivation equations at first. I will first look at what these equations brings me. If I use their equations, what results I could achieve? I will first, and if the results I think is very useful to me, then I will start looking at their derivation. So, implication or application part is the most important part. You have to tell me what you're doing and uh, what those numbers mean on solving your application, followed by a conclusion. Uh, someone asked me if page one, yeah, this page one is not, this page one does not represent the Facebook bubble I've mentioned. Uh, uh, page rank is another thing about search engine. And if you are interested, you can search online. In here, I'm not going to talk about page rank. I just want to show you about the importance of a clear writing structures. And for illustration, for illustration, I want to go back to the example of the, I, not here. Go back to the examples of here. So now, if you are given this example, you are going to write a report. You're going to write a report. Then, uh, as I mentioned, you, you, you really have to have a title, right? And uh, some, some students ask me questions, I will reply you later. Uh, I, will re I will reply you after the end of this class. So, what should be the title? What should be the title? Because you know that this model is about a traffic network, right? So, so to let the readers know the report is about linear algebra on traffic model, it's actually very simple. You just say, maybe you can say application of linear algebra on solving traffic models. It's, it's very it's simple as that, or maybe addressing the problems that you're going to solve. And in the introduction, what do you usually mention in the introduction? Because um, when you're reading a book or news or any other stories, introduction serves as purpose of attracting the readers to read, right? How to attract the readers to read? You have to emphasize why your report is relevant to them, right? So maybe in this case, because in this case it's about traffic models, so you could say something like uh, nowadays, um, from engineering perspective, uh, maybe many people hate traffic congestions, but there are more and more vehicles flowing in the roads. And so that's, that's why it is very important to develop a method to control the traffic condition or something like this. And people might think that it is more relevant to them. And so, and then you can bring out what you are going to say. So, it works. so in the following report, you might describe a linear algebra method that serve the purpose of modeling the traffic flow. So this is already a good enough introduction in this example, in this example. So in short, introduction, you have to mention, first mention about the problem that you are trying, trying to solve. Why is it relevant to them? And um, what are you going to do with linear algebra? Okay, so, and from the problem, Maybe go back to here. And from the problem definition and formulation, what do you do in this part? In this part, you want to transfer, transform your real life insights to a problem of mathematics, right? Actually, it's pretty simple. You just define the numbers. What is the meaning of that, those numbers? And um, because because in the in your course you always see some equation that like ax equals to b, right? You always see something like this. But ax equals to b is just numbers without meanings. ax equals to b is just numbers without meanings. So 
people will not be really interested to see you solve an A is equal to B without knowing what you're talking about. So in the problem definition and formulation part, all you have to do is give all those numbers meanings. So in this example, you may say, oh, the problem definition is the following. So you need to consider a network like this. You can draw this network out up to you and you define every symbols, you define every symbols with a meaning. For example, you define, suppose you define A, B, C, D are four row junctions and X1, X2, X3, X4, X5 are the flow of vehicles from A to D, from A to B, from B, out of B, from C to B, from C to D, etc. You define all the symbols, you give it a meaning. And then you give an objective of the problem. So after you define, what are you going to do? The objective of this problem is to solve the system, actually. You, you want to solve, determine the traffic flow you want to determine all the traffic flow from A to D, from A to B. Basically, you want to solve for X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. It's as simple as that. This is your problem objective. And then it go, goes to the method session, right? Method. It goes to the method session. Basically, method is how you solve it, right? After you raise out your objective, which is to solve for X1 to X5, then the method will be how you solve for this one to x5. Then you can apply some, anything that you have learned, or oh, solve the system of linear equation, or pivot, or free variables, or even some vector space, something like this. And then the most, 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 most important part is that don't stop after you solve it. Don't, solve, don't stop after you put, introduce your method and find out x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 and done, don't stop it. Because the readers are more interested in what those numbers mean. So, okay, you solve for x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So what? Yeah, you, you, you can also ask yourself, so what? And then that, is the, that brings to the session of implications. What does those values mean? And you can say that by solving, just, just I've mentioned before, by solving those traffic flow, one may consider minimizing the cost of the tr whole traffic system, or one may consider doing some other tasks. As long as those tasks, as long as those tasks are fully truly relevant to what you have, what you have been solving, and then move on to the conclusion. You can talk about you use a linear algebraic method to stop for completely solve for a traffic flow problem. And by solving this traffic flow problem, uh, maybe the risk of, maybe the probability of the road being congested has been largely minimized, something like that. Something like that. It, it's not the only one answer. I just randomly brainstorm one. And you can even further relax some assumptions of this problem. Because some assumption is that in here, we assume x5 is free. But maybe maybe you can actually randomly assign a free variable. You can set x3 is free. You can set x2 is free. Or you can even relax some assumptions like maybe C to B is not one direction. They can travel from both directions. So there's many, many more cases you can work on. But this future exploration, then you can include in a conclusion, just saying that you can have more directions to explore. And last but not least, you need to include a reference. And I am still asking Patrick about what is the appropriate referencing style, which is uh, IEEE or APA. But uh, there's one thing for sure, one thing's for sure, uh, which is a lot of people make the mistake is they directly cite the source from YouTube or Wikipedia, they just say, oh, maybe they browse YouTube videos, say that, oh, this is a really, really nice uh, video solving network problem on the using linear algebra. So the direct is the site. And it's not a usual practice because YouTube or Wikipedia are second-handed source 
so they are not the first, they are not the original source. This is the first thing. The second thing is uh, those information might not be accurate. So they, they could make mistakes sometimes. So if you really want to cite those materials, you need to look at their reference. So some YouTube's video description will have some citations or some Wikipedia, they will have a bibliography or reference list at the back bottom of their page. And you, that you try to go into those source of information and make the citations directly instead of citing. Yes, and about the style of citation, I need to confirm with Patrick. Yes, I have not asked him, but I will make a public announcement after I am confirmed with him. Um, okay, so some student asked me, uh, actually the, the Facebook bubble and the page rank is a completely different stuff. The Facebook bubble stuff is more about, that model is more about the social media, social media model, uh, which, um, which to be honest, uh, is, uh, I cannot think of a name. It is a very simplified model, which I read somewhere else about how, how some social media accounts values the relationship from the other's account. And PageRank is another model. PageRank is a model about search engine. It's about how, how Google recommends. So when all the users type their keywords, when all the users type the keywords, for example, I type linear algebra. For example, I type linear algebra. And there are billions of web pages that contains the keyword linear algebra. Then how the Google choose the right website for you. And this is, you really have to use some algorithm on the search engine to determine. And if you are interested, you can search PageRank and linear algebra. You can find out, actually I can search for you. A And if you look at this link, uh, it's actually a really good representation of how do you use an linear algebra to solve a network model evolving in search engine. And if you add the appropriate title here, it's actually a really good report too. Uh, I think everything related to network basically is has a strong relevance to linear algebra, I would say, because you you gradually know why, because all network can be represented by linear algebra representation. At least you can use some connectivity matrix to connect. For example, yes, some student asked me the just like the code. Uh, what do you mean by the code? Coding and programming, actually, yes, yes. You, you could say that. Okay, okay. Um, last but not least, it's about the very guy submission. Um, actually, I've already posted a detailed guide online, so I think I think everyone, some, some of you might have to experience to use it before in the last semester. So I think you just wait, because now it's almost time. And so, Uh, you, you, can you still do traffic? Yes, still ask me, can I do traffic flow as the report? If you think of a different scenario, it's not as simple as that, because now this, this example, this example is actually a very, very, very simplified model. So you cannot, uh, so if you, as long as you bring some new insights, then you can definitely do traffic flow as your problem. Mm. So student asked me, 
does the equations of the network need to be real data supported? Uh, actually, I think no need, no need, because I think everything is like a conceptual. Of, of course, you cannot make a calculation and, and generate some results that seems nonsense to people. Right? So as long as we think that your model is reasonable, then I think is it doesn't have to be real data supported. But we as but you you have to convince us that your model makes sense. Uh, is it clear enough? So because sometimes I know I understand it's very hard to find real data supporting your network model, but at least in your report, you need to convince us that your model makes sense. Yeah, electronic circuit is actually also one, one network model because some electronic circuits is very, very, um, very, very complicated, right? So many different resistor, many complicated connection pathway, and this is definitely a network model too. Uh, but uh, you have to keep in mind, you have to use linear algebra method. So at least, at least I have to see some matrix operation, right? So if if you write the whole report without single matrix and representation, then don't tell me you are using any linear algebra. Uh, so someone asked me, how can you find appropriate application source? Um, I think the best way, the best way for you to find is from search engine, <laughs> basically. For example, you, you, you first, so to write a good report, first of all, you really have to be interested in that subject matter. So I said, what is my suggestion? My suggestion is you first identify some network that you feel interested in. For example, some like to study interpersonal relationship. Some like to study maybe academic academia, like reference or paper. Maybe some like to study about connections with different societies, something like this. If you have something interesting in your mind, for example, for me, like interpersonal relationship, then you can try to search online by typing those keywords. Interpersonal relationship and linear algebra. For example, I, I just try, I just try. I don't know the result now. Or maybe even though you go network or linear algebra to see what you can find. Oh, so it's like uh, well, in the personal network, then you can just click it one by one to see uh, what insights can they give you. Wow, so complicated. <laughs> if the first link is not the right one, then try try different search methods. Then I think I think you can identify some of the interesting area that you are. For example, you you previously mentioned about coding, right? Then uh, I'm sure there's a lot of coding that's related to like machine learning, right? Direct some neural network stuff. Neural network is still a network problem, right? And usually we have to find out the optimal weights or something, optimal weights of a deep neural network, something like this. This is actually also solving a new network problem. Okay, so this is the end of today's tutorial. I, I will upload. I will upload the. I will upload the uh, recordings, and I will make a public public announcement to talk about the referencing style and address all the questions you ask. So. Uh, yes, yes, medical robotics linear algebra application. Yes, of course, but you yeah, um. We have to make sure it's about network. Actually, in medical robotics, there's a lot of network problem, right? Uh, maybe some like surgical, surgical robotics or how how the system are connected with each other, right? So usually, 
uh, I saw some really fancy stuff like you use a computer to connect with a surgical arm and you can do some microsurgery control and those system, those system is actually connected through a network and you can find out some linear algebra application regarding to that or something like this. So I think there's uh, many, many things that you can explore. Or maybe medical robotics, even some like a uh, uh, nervous system or neural, neural, neural simulation, something like this. Do we need to revert back to our course materials? Uh, uh of i think is you don't you, you don't really have to refer back to your course materials as long as it's related to linear algebra yes because uh uh we all know that vector space now space or simply solving linear system of the equation cannot solve much problem in real life right <laughs> real life is much more complicated so if you demonstrate your ability to understand those harder concepts, then go for it. For example, like eigenvalue, eigenvectors, but I think some of you have learned it, which is very, very useful. A very, very useful linear algebra application. So if there's no any other questions, uh, then I think I will end the meeting soon. And I will upload the video. Let me stop the recording here.